looking at one or two of the things that we can do with the table cells. I've already inserted a table into my document. I've left the formatting very simple just to illustrate what, work, what we can do. Quite often in a table you want to add titles. One of the useful things we can do is select more than one cell and merge them to be one cell so we can have a heading that goes right across that one, uh, like one column. And we do that using the table menu and then down to merge cells. If I just click away, you'll be able to see that, that top row, whereas it was two cells, is now one. So we can put our main heading into that section and center it using the normal centering icon. And then you have your heading centered across the whole of the table or however many cells you chose to merge. Once you have merged cells, you are probably not surprised to learn that you can unmerge them or split them. And again, all you have to do is make sure that you've got the cells selected. Then we use the table menu and this time split cells. And the dialog box asks us how many cells we want to split that one cell into. It asks us to confirm how many columns and rows to split that cell into. It tries and usually gets it right. It's worked out that this particular table is two columns uh, and that we've only got one row selected, so that's why the two and the one is there. You can override that in the usual way. I'm quite happy with those settings, so I click on OK. And there you can see the cells have now been put into two again, back to how they were. So that was splitting cells and merging cells. Looking at that in a slightly more useful table, um, I've just dialed up a table here with timetables in. And you can see I've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on the left hand side with blank rows because Monday is linked to the morning and the afternoon. So what I can do is just merge those two cells together to combine them into one and merge the two for Tuesday and for Wednesday. And you can see there that it then becomes obvious that the morning and the afternoon are linked to the Monday. But there's a couple more features we can use that will make that look even better. If I right click in the cell with Monday, I can drop down to where we've got cell alignment. And I've got various cell alignments that I can use. And I like this one here, which merges it centrally uh, in the vertical plane and in the horizontal. So top to bottom and left to right. So when I click on that middle one, you can see my contents of the cell are centered in that cell. It looks a lot more uh, user friendly, if you will. That's just right clicking on the cell, drop down to cell alignment. And there we have. That's really quite useful. And the other thing we could do on that right mouse click is text direction. And we could choose the direction that the text can be read in. Depending on your table, whether or not this is useful, um, I'm just going to select the vertical alignment there and click on OK. And you can see what it's done there to Monday. But if I make that cell a little bit bigger, then it becomes more effective then. So that's using the right mouse button. You can alter the cell alignment. And you can alter the text direction. And finally, I'm not going to go through working with the Tables and Borders toolbar with you, um, but I strongly re recommend that you open that from the View, Tables and Borders, uh, sorry, View and Toolbars, and then Tables and Borders. Have a look around at what's on there. There's your Table Auto format, for example. There's the Align Top, sorry, there's the Alignment tool. So all the things we've been looking at are on there and they can be very useful. Have a play around with that. One more useful feature of table properties is the cell alignment. The default cell alignment, as you can see in this table that we've got selected, is for the text to be quite close to the edge of the, uh, of the, the borders, if you like, or of the cell. We've got the table selected and if we do table Try that again, table selected and do table, table properties. Then we've got 
on the table tab we've got the options button and this is where we can change the margins within the cells that's a useful feature by the way that allows you to put cell spacing between the cells have a little play with that one but we're focusing on the margins and I'm just going to alter the margins all the way around to say 0.5 to make things look nice and obviously different to what I've already got there 0.5 all the way around and then OK and OK again and we can see the effect that that has had on our table there's a half a centimetre 0.5 centimetre difference between the, the border of the table and where the text starts all the way around not at the end because if we brought the, the margins in then it would have that effect but because we've got a wider um, cell that the margin allows for then uh, we don't see it on that particular text but we can also work with individual cells if I just select one cell and look at the properties of that one this time I'm doing right click and down to table properties if we select the cell tab then that has its own options button and from there we can choose whether that particular cell has the same margins or different as the rest of the, the table so again I'll make it nice and obviously different bring those down to point 0.1 and see what that looks like oops try that again not point 0.5 and OK and OK again and you can see how the the margins of that cell have changed you can also do it on a whole row or a whole column just select the row or column going to properties still work on the cell tab but it works on all the cells that you've got selected and then you could adjust them for that let's make this one 0.2 all the way around actually let's put zero on the bottom and zero on the right and see what that does look at all the extra tick boxes you've got have a play around with those see what they do and there we have cell alignment 